In this video, we're going to look at how to auto invoice on the sales side and on the purchasing side stock transfers that are intercompany, meaning between two different companies. So we have site A from company A, site B from company B. In this example, customer needs to daily transfer stock from one to the other. They're also going to be recognizing, um, you know, sales income as part of the process. And they're going to be making money on the process. So we're using a price list also, an intercompany price list. So to look at the setup here, I have a sales price list set up. And here, we're look, we have a T40 as the intercompany price list. And you see I've got two products with a price. The Each individual site has to be set up as an inter, inter site business partner. We look at the setup of the business partners, whether customer or Here we see that inner site box is checked and we have to have a uh, receiving site listed also in here. So you'll need to have a sales site set up as inner site and the um, receiving site as well. So once that is all set up, <clears throat> we also have our inner company set up. That's under setup organizational structure in our company. And here we want to make sure that this line, the sales invoice, will create automatically a supplier invoice and transfer prices. And we specify just in this case, or just sale, the invoice type is INV and the purchasing type is INV. That has to be set up as well. So I have a price list set up. I have my um, business partner set up properly and um, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to do a transfer now. So there are two different ways you can do this. You can actually do purchase orders, which will automatically generate sales orders, deliveries, receipts, and invoices. All in all, that's six steps in the process. Or the quickest method that I found is to set up um, just an inner site transfer of the stock and you can create a recurring task to automatically then create the sales invoice which will automatically create the purchase invoice you can even turn on an in automatic invoice validation in as a batch task as well so in the end the end user only has to do the intersite transfer and everything else can be automated if set up properly so in, in this case we're going to go under stock intersite transfer So here I'm going to create a new intersite transfer. I'm going to be transferring from this site to my destination site. Okay, these sites are at two different companies. If, if they're at two different companies and you have a price list set up, then that's when you can, you know, be basically selling for more than the inventory cost. So I'm going to choose a product next product is going to be one of the two that I had in the price list, which I showed you the intercompany price list. So I select my product, okay, and <clears throat> this is where it can get a little confusing. It's like, okay, what do I do next? I have to do stock selection from the left list, and this will actually show all the stock lines of this product. You could have if you have multiple lots, you, you would be showing multiple lines here, but it's with respect to this product. So I'm going, there's, I have 3,180 pounds. I'm going to transfer just 10 pounds. If I select this, you can see the price automatically filled in from my price list. Okay. Now my stock cost on this is $1.01 a pound, but I'm selling from one site in company A to another site in company B for $1.91 a pound. So I'm going to change the quantity 
So I can do this again. I'm going to create my transaction. Okay. So it created it and you see it automatically. If it's in our company, it checks to be invoice. So if I go to my stock accounting interface, now this should be running in the background as well on a periodic basis, but I'm going to mainly trigger it. You see it generates <coughs> stock transfers that post to the journal on both sides. Now we'll go look at my journals. Today for the entry date, Let's see if they're there. Lots of stock. We're going to look for change transaction. From today, so we need change three. see here. So this would be on the receiving side of the ship to you see dollar 91, 10 pounds so 1910. And we see on the other side where we shipped from, I told you it was a dollar or one a pound, 10 pounds. We had stock that went out at $10 and then received at the other side at $19. So essentially we're making money in the sales process between the two sites. It'll ultimately have to be uh, eliminated <clears throat> at the end of the year for inner company, but this is a way you can basically recognize revenue, sales revenue from one site to another that are part of two different companies. Okay, so the next step in the process is um, we have a recurring task set up to generate <clears throat> the sales invoice. So the function in X3 to do this, there is a, a dedicated function under sales module, invoices, auto transfer invoices. This, is, this function is designed just to create invoices for stock transfers that are in our company. Um, but this is a manual step I, I don't want the customer to have to run. So I created a recurring task that calls this function. The recurring task did not, if we go into task management, the recurring task did not exist <clears throat> in the predefined list of tasks. But I was just able to add it with the tax code, the function name, and make it active. Then the next step is to set it up as a recurring task. Okay, which is what I have here. And again, I'm calling my task code, giving it a recurring task code that's the same as the task code. It's active. All right, my, my date fields, this is basically invoice date will be today for transfers up until today. It's important that these are filled out or this won't work. Parameters, again, I select my company, my sales site, my target site. <clears throat> so this is basically gonna filter my, to create in invoices only for transfers from a specific site to a specific site. Okay, you could set up multiple of these if, you know, depending on what sites you're transferring to and from. So those are the parameters. And then I go into, if I want to see what happens with the generation of the invoices in my query management, you see I have this, uh, here is my um, recurring task that's supposed to run next. Okay, so that's not for almost another 40 minutes. So I'm going to modify this <clears throat> to run here in just a few minutes. All right, so I update this view, and that should become active within the 30-second interval here. And 
I forgot I need to leave this stock transfer record. Okay, we see it's in progress here. It gave me an error. It must have been running when I still had the... <clears throat> yep, I had the record open. So I'm going to run that again. See, it's set up to run again the next time. Next, I'll go into my sales invoices. I'll look at invoice data today. And I will see. Here's my invoice. Done previously. Let's see when this was done. Yep, this one was just automatically created. So I have my sales invoice that's created <clears throat> for my stock change transaction. You see noted here it's intercompany checkbox and intercompany yes. So I want to find my purchase invoice on the other side on the um, receiving company. So if I go into purchasing invoices, Put in today's date. Now I don't see my invoice. This is an earlier transfer of 650 pounds. The reason for that is <clears throat> my sales invoice is not yet validated. So if I come back here, my sales invoices, and I look at my sales invoice for that 10 pounds I just transferred, okay, you see it's not posted yet. Now I have another recurring task that does post invoices, but it just hasn't gone yet. So I'm going to manually post this just to show the process. And you'll see because it knows it's in our company, it automatically creates a purchase invoice on the other side, 938. So we'll take a look at that. There's 938. So you can see purchase invoice for 1910, $19 that was at the sales price. And the sales invoice that was at uh, 1910 as well. Now the purchase invoice <clears throat> you'll need to post as well. Now again, there's a recurring task that does this. I'm just going to manually post it. And I can go in my journal and see all this. So if I come down here, I, there's my invoice, 1168. You see my 1910 accounts receivable and sales. Here's my purchase invoice here. Again, 1910. Accounts receivable. 
fails. This account needs to be changed. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on my, that was on my sales invoice. Here's my purchase invoice. I do need to change. We don't want to post a suspense here. <clears throat> so I'll get this changed, but we have a, should be AP and um, cost of goods or um, and um, 